Let's look at a few examples of questions that can be answered by understanding the graphs of sinusoidal functions. So first of all, a sinusoidal function is any transformation of the graph of a sine function. Uh, for example, cosine is a sinusoidal function because you can get cosine by shifting the graph of sine. Now, if there's no degree symbol, it's important to remember that the argument of the sinusoidal function is thought of as in radians. So, for example, in these two graphs, we have y is sine of x radians, y is cosine of x radians, and measured in radians, these functions have a period of 2 pi. So notice that from the interval from 0 to 2 pi, 2 pi is a little bit more than 6, it's about 6.3, we get a complete behavior of the sine function before it starts to repeat itself. Similarly, from 0 to 2 pi, the cosine function goes through a complete wave before it starts to repeat itself. Okay, so look, uh, the other things to remember, in addition to the period, are that the maximum output of a sine function, sine of x, the maximum output is 1, the minimum output is negative 1, and the average output, meaning the height of this line that goes through the center uh, is at height zero. The mean output is zero. And all those properties are true for the cosine function as well. Okay. So let's suppose we we're asked on what subinterval of the interval from zero to two pi is sine of theta positive. So we have a theta here. That means we're going to think of our input variable on the horizontal axis as theta. And if we just remember the graph we were looking at, and these are things that we are going to want to memorize, the sine function has a graph that looks something like this, from 0 to 2 pi. And on what subset of that interval, from 0 to 2 pi, is this function of theta positive? Well, we can see that it's positive on this subinterval which goes from 0 to pi. So the answer is 0 pi. Uh, actually, since we're asking where it's positive, we want to know where the output's strictly greater than 0. So uh, at the endpoints, 0 and pi, sine of 0 is 0, sine of pi is 0. But 0 is neither positive nor negative. If we only want positive values, then we want this open interval from 0 to pi. How about this question? On what subset of the interval 0 to 2 pi is sine of 2 theta positive? Sine of 2 theta, what's that going to look like? Well, remember that the graph of sine of theta and the graph of sine of 2 theta are related to each other by a transformation. If I look at sine of 2 theta, that's going to look like the graph of sine of theta, except there's a horizontal compression. Um, what's going to happen, this 2 makes the function go through twice as many oscillations over the same interval. So instead of having a period from 0 to pi, or from 0 to 2 pi, this function goes through a complete oscillation on the interval from 0 to pi. And then by the time it gets to 2 pi, it will have gone through a second complete oscillation. So I want to know, where is this function positive? Well, it's positive if I plug in any of these theta values. So that's going to be between 0 and pi over 2. And it's going to be positive if I plug in any of these theta values. So that's from pi to 3 pi over 2. And I want to put together both of those sets for my answer. So I'll take the union of those two sets. 
this is how we can express those two intervals together as a single set using set notation. All right, one more question. Uh, find the maximum and minimum values of this function. f of x is 3 cosine of 4x plus 1. All right, well, the first thing we want to do is figure out what the graph of this function looks like. And this is a transformation of the cosine function. So let's start by remembering what cosine looks like. It's got a graph that looks roughly like this. That's So that's cosine of x. Cosine of 4x, what's that going to do? Well, it's just going to be a horizontal compression of cosine of x. Cosine of 4x is going to oscillate faster. So from 0 to 2 pi, instead of going through one oscillation, it will go through four oscillations. 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is at 2 pi right here. Uh, OK, and this is, so far, this is the graph of cosine of 4x. Now, what if I multiply by 3? That causes a vertical stretch. So instead of it having a maximum output of 1, like cosine of 4x does, after the vertical stretch, it will have a maximum output of 3. And it will have a minimum output of negative 3. OK, one more transformation. We have to add 1 to the whole thing. Adding 1 is going to shift the entire graph upward. So instead of the center of this being at height 0, the center will be at height 1. So let's draw one more picture. I'll have 1, 2, 3, 4 oscillations. But I've shifted everything up one unit. So the top is now at height 4. And the bottom is now at height negative 2. Here's our x-axis, our y-axis. This is the graph of y equals 3 cosine of 4x plus 1. OK, and now I want to know what are the maximum and minimum values. And we can see that from this graph. The maximum output is 4. And the minimum output is negative 2. 